this is into the fire. I'd like to welcome back to Into the Fire, one of my favourite guys, the incredibly talented super fella, a cool return guest, Lockie Ash. Nice to meet you, Lockie. Hey, how you going? Good. Well, Lockie, what a year, hey? Your first game, then another 11. Your first goal, minus my celebration. I'll just put it out there. Seeing the song in a win, COVID hub, you've really experienced it all, haven't you? Do you still pinch yourself when you think, wow, I'm an AFL footballer? Um, I don't reckon anymore, but early days definitely um, took a while to sink in. Um, probably, yeah, the first two or three months when you're going out to train with the, the boys you go out to train with, you sort of pinch yourself. But after that, you sort of just get used to it um, and accept it. And then, yeah, just try and settle into to doing your role for the team and, and yeah, fulfilling the job of um, being an AFL footballer. Yeah. Now, you went at pick four. Talk me through it. Were you pretty sure the GWS were going to pick you pick you up? Um, yeah, I was. Yeah, I was pretty sure. Like not not until probably twenty four hours out. Um, I wasn't too sure where I was going. Um, I probably knew it would be either yeah Melbourne GWS or Sydney. Um, I thought probably them ones. Probably the couple of weeks before. Um, and then yeah, as it got closer, probably twenty four to forty eight hours out. Um, my manager, he sort of said that yeah, it looks pretty likely that you'll be going to the Giants at pick four. So. Um, I still wasn't 100% sure, so um, yeah, I was still yeah thrilled to get my name read out um, at pick four, but I wasn't 100% sure, so yeah, it was, it was still a bit of a surprise, which was good. Yeah, going at pick four would have been so cool. Now, yeah, I was, had... yeah. yeah. Sorry, you go on. <laughs> no, that's okay. Now, you had to move house. How was that like? And who did you live with on arriving at Judah Will? Yes. Yeah, so when I first got here, um, I lived with Tom Grant and Jack Riccardi uh, in the first year, um, which was really good. Um, they're both ripping fellas, um, very, very easy to get along with. Um, and for me, uh, coming from a farm, um, moving into the city, was, uh, that was probably the hardest thing for me. Um, living in an apartment, uh, I, probably, I wasn't really used to that and never done it before. So it took a while to get my head around that. But yeah, the other two boys made it really easy. Um, for me, especially them two being city boys and sort of knowing what, what it's all about um, living in the city, they sort of made it easy for me to um, to move and yeah, and help me um, settle in as best I could. Yeah, they're legends. Now, I always wonder what is what is that very first training session like? How nervous were you? And can you remember who the first player who spoke to you? Um, I, can't, I don't reckon I can remember the first player that spoke to me. Uh, I reckon off the top of my head, it might've been Jacob Popper. I think when you walk, or we walked in and I think he was there getting breakfast. So I think he might've been the first one. Um, but yeah, the first training session, um, when you're in first year, you sort of get eased into it um, pretty lightly. They sort of just give you, yeah, about a quarter of a session. I think we did in our first training run, um, just till they assess our bodies and make sure we've got no injuries and everything's all good. So yeah, we only did a, a short session, um, which was really good. Yeah, I was obviously very nervous. Um, yeah, uh, but it, it was awesome. Um, first training session um, and meeting all the boys like they're all really good fellas and yeah be better than what I thought that'd be to be honest so they made it very easy for me to um, come to Sydney and yeah play footy. Yeah it sounds awesome. Now pre-season is always tough and I can imagine especially tough for a young guy straight out of the under 18s. How was pre-season? Yeah uh, it was good. I, I sort of actually don't mind pre-season. Um, I, I sort of like it. Um, probably helps it. I'm a, I'm a pretty good runner, so that probably makes it a little bit easier. But uh, I think the biggest thing for me was getting used to the humidity uh, in Sydney. Sydney's pretty humid, and back home it's more of a, a dry heat. So just adapt, adapting to that was pretty hard. But uh, I, yeah, I like preseason, um, and I learned so much during the preseason, getting to know everyone. Like I, my first preseason was um, really enjoyable. Um, obviously, this year, um, this time around, will be a little bit different. But yeah, my first preseason, I actually. I loved it um, and all the boys were really good. We um, we went to a camp to Noosa for a couple of weeks, which is awesome. Um, got up there and just got out and trained at different grounds and seen new things, which is good. So yeah, I, I love pre-season. Yeah. So give me a little insight into the club. How quickly did you feel comfortable, comfortable that you really fit in and who have you become pretty close with? Yeah, so I uh, probably took, oh, I'd probably say, we come for a month before Christmas um, and then probably a month after Christmas and then I sort of felt like I belonged. 
Um, obviously, it's yeah, when I, you go out and you pinch yourself, I think that's sort of when you go out and you don't really think about who you're training with and like you're running next to the bloke and sort of not thinking about how good he is and all that sort of stuff. I think that's sort of when you realise that you sort of fit in and like all that stuff sort of gone away. You're not a fanboy anymore. You're a part of the team. Um, so probably two months, I reckon, I've been at the club. Um, probably about late Jan, I reckon. I sort of felt like I was a part of it and sort of knew the structures and stuff off by heart and all that sort of stuff. Um, <clears throat> and I think that the blokes I've come, come pretty close with, um, obviously Tom and Jake living with them, I'm pretty close with them now. Um, the other first year boy, Tom Hutchison, um, he's from Adelaide. He was drafted in our draft, so we're pretty close with him. And then obviously playing in the back line, I'm pretty close with a few of those boys down there. Um, he sure was really good for me this year, um, helping me obviously. He's um, played 325 games, so he's got a lot of the big experience, which he was uh, kind enough to let me in on a few of his tricks and whatnot. So he was really good. Um, but all the backline boys, they were real good. Like Phil Davis, Lockie Whitfield, Nick Haynes. Um, they were all, yeah, really good. Um, good to me and, and helped me out as much as they could, um, which was really good. So, yeah, but the whole list is pretty close um, as everyone has sort of moved to Sydney from other parts of, the, of Australia, like Melbourne and Adelaide and Perth and whatnot, um, because not many players have been drafted from Sydney um, to the Giants. So everyone's sort of... <coughs> excuse me, uh, relocated to Sydney. So we're all pretty close because we're sort of like each other's family, um, which is really good. It's really good for the culture. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, interesting. Now, COVID has affected everyone in different ways. How was hub life? And did you find it tough being isolated away from the general public public life? Um, the, lock, the hubs are a tricky one. Um, early was really good because it was sort of like a bit of a camp, something new. So the first two weeks, they were really good. Everyone was in a good mood and whatnot. Um, and then we went over to, <clears throat> to WA um, and we're in the, the quarantine there, um, which we weren't allowed to leave the hotel, which was pretty hard. Um, sort of, yeah, just being locked up all the time. But then when we went back to Gold Coast for probably five or six weeks. Um, it was really good there because we had our, um, our hotel was more of a resort style thing. So there was plenty of um, spaces to go and do stuff, a nice big pool and whatnot. So that was really good. Um, and then being isolated from the public, it wasn't too bad, but probably the only thing was you just, yeah, couldn't enjoy the, the finer things in life, like going out for dinner or going and sitting down and having coffee with friends and stuff like that. You sort of were, um, yeah, just had to go and get a takeaway and stuff like that. So it wasn't too bad, um, but you, you wouldn't want to be doing that for, for too long. But the eight weeks, yeah, it wasn't too bad. I probably wouldn't recommend doing it, but... Yeah, it wasn't wasn't the worst thing um, I'm sure a human could experience. Yeah. Now, as far as the season went, you achieved many firsts. What was it like finding out you were playing your first game and could you tell your dad the next time you do something cool to make out he's a bit more excited? <laughs> yeah, I've had that from a few people, actually. Um, yeah, the first, I, I remember I got, we were playing a Friday night game against the Western Bulldogs um, and... Oh, we did a Thursday night training session, uh, Wednesday night training session. Um, and I thought that I probably would have been told um, if I was playing then or not. Um, I knew it was going to be pretty close between me or Isaac Cumming. He was playing at the time. Um, I knew it was either going to be him or I. It was yeah, pretty close. Um, and I just assumed that um, I'd get told two days out from the game. So that would be on the, the Wednesday night if I was playing. Um, and nothing was said to me. So I just assumed that I wasn't playing. Um, and then, yeah, rocked up to the club next week and we do these sort of walkthrough things uh, out in our walkthrough area and everyone sort of goes out there. So I just yeah, assumed that we're all just going out there. Um, and then, yeah, Leon sort of just said that I was going to play, um, which was pretty exciting. I didn't, yeah, didn't expect it. it was a bit of a shock as I thought I probably would have been told the night before. So it was a good surprise. Um, and then, yeah, telling mum and dad, um, obviously, yeah, that um, dad being dad wasn't too excited. He's um, pretty plain, um, but that's just, yeah, who he is. So, no, they were both very happy um, and pretty emotional, something that I worked pretty hard for and they've given up a lot of their time to, to get me there, take me to trainings and whatnot. So it was a bit of a pity they couldn't come and watch with the COVID stuff, but I'm sure, yeah, they watched it on TV and they would have been happy enough, I would assume. Yeah, well, I was so excited when I heard you were playing your first game. So, <laughs> Thanks, mate. Now, I've been so excited to talk to you today. What is being an AFL footballer really like? Yeah, um, I sort of sort of got to pinch yourself at times that you're doing what you wanted to do since you were a little kid. Um, 
it's uh, def- it's definitely a good job and there's a lot of rewards, but um, it's definitely very hard work. Um, you got to put in a lot of hours training, um, especially yeah, training by yourself over the off-season period um, can be pretty tough at times, but you just got to yeah, do the right thing, um, get through the training and whatnot, um, and you got to make a lot of sacrifices um, with sort of like drinking and, and stuff like that, that 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 your mates do. You sort of, yeah, got to make those sacrifices um, because it's your job. And yeah, if you want to, Stay, stay playing AFL footy. Those are sacrifices you've got to make. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's definitely a really good job. Um, very rewarding, but there's a lot of hard work that gets done behind closed doors that not many people see. Um, but it all comes hand in hand. It's a, it's a very good job. You get to kick footies around for a living, um, but it's also pretty hard work at the same time. Yeah, it would be. Now, you went to GWS with another guy I really love chatting to, Tom Green. How is he going? Tom's going great. Um, he went back to Canberra over the off season, um, and he come back, and I didn't recognise him. I reckon he's um, he's been eating, sleeping in the gym. He is, um, yeah, he's looking massive at the moment, which is good. Um, he, yeah, we went to the gym yesterday, and yeah, didn't recognise him. So, no, he's going really well. Um, he's just moved into an apartment with one of his mates from Canberra, so he's going well. Um, he had a good off season back in Canberra, and finished off last year really well. Had those couple of games, and he had. 30 touches in one of them and maybe 20 in the other. So he finished off the season really well. So hopefully you can build on that this year and, yeah, become a consistent performer um, for yeah, us this I'm, year. Yeah, I'm sure he will. So yeah. what is Lockie yeah. Ash hoping for next year with 12 months under his belt? Yeah, um, just hoping to, yeah, hopefully get picked in the round one team um, and go from there, just play my role in the team. Um, obviously, we haven't started pre-season yet, so I'm not sure what that'll be yet, but... Hopefully, yeah, just play as many games as I can and help the team as best as I can. Um, and from a team perspective, um, obviously disappointing we missed out on finals this year. It's a pretty good list that we've got. So hopefully um, the team, we can play finals. Hopefully, yeah, get a top four spot and have a real crack at winning the premiership. Um, like the boys did a couple of years ago, obviously making the grand final. Um, they're all pretty keen to to go back and go one better, um, having the taste of the grand final and how good it is playing on grand final day. Um, there's a real hunger in the group to to get back there and, and go one better. Um, obviously, there's a lot of good teams um, like Richmond, Geelong and West Coast, et cetera. Um, so hopefully, yeah, we can just go and compete and do the best we can. Hopefully, yeah, playing finals um, will be the, the team um, goal, no doubt, um, after a disappointing year last year. So hopefully, yeah, we can have a good pre-season and see what happens. Yeah, and GWS are looking really good, so... Yeah, and um, a lot of the boys are, yeah, doing their off-season programs, pretty, pretty following them pretty closely. So a lot of the boys are looking good. So hopefully when we come back in January, um, we're flying, which will be good. Yeah. All right, quick five questions. Who did you get a little bit starstruck on day one? Uh, Lockie Whitfield, obviously my favourite player and in the locker room next to him. So that was, yeah, took a while. Yeah, that was a bit of an eye opener, that one. Yeah, that would have been cool. Best thing about being an AFL player? Um, you get to do what you love every day. Yeah. Do people know when you walk around town? Uh, that's the best thing about Sydney. Um, everyone sort of follows the NRL up here and they don't sort of know you too well. So um, you get to, yeah, just go about your life um, as day-to-day just as a normal person, which is good. Um, yeah, so I quite like that, um, keeping a low profile. Doesn't sound too bad. Have yeah. you had many people ask for selfies or autographs when you're out? Um, not too many up around Sydney, but a few down home in Victoria. Um, just, yeah, my brother, he's got a few mates and whatnot. So, yeah, just a few younger kids, yeah, every now and then, which is good because I would have been like them one day. So it's always good to give back. Yeah, it is. Who's the coolest guy in the club? Coolest guy in the club? Oh, geez, there's a lot. I reckon Connor Iden from Geelong Falcons. He's got a lot of spunk about him and he's, he's a pretty funny fella, so I'd probably say him. Yeah, sounds cool. Biggest pest at the club? Biggest pest at the club? Whoa. I probably would have said Tommy Sheridan, but he's retired. And then probably Heath Shaw after that, but he's retired as well. So, biggest pest at the club? Jeez, that's a hard one. They're all they're all pretty good. Maybe probably Connor Iden is probably next in line, I reckon. 
is pretty funny and likes to crack a few jokes to people. So I'll probably say him next. Oh yeah, good answer. Okay, Lockie, I won't hold you up any longer. I'm sure you have a beach to lay on or a restaurant to eat at. Seriously though, Lockie, it is wonderful to talk to you again. You are, as always, a terrific guy with a huge future. You're a star and I can't thank you enough for joining me today. I look forward to seeing you dashing off that halfback line next year. Thanks again, buddy. Thanks, Legend. It's been great. Good to talk to you. It's been a while, so hopefully we can do it again next year. Hopefully. Thanks, Lockie.